Okay, so sadly, Mr. Milkovich is not here today to give his side. But there was a ton of criticism hoisted, foisted, dumped upon both he and Mr. Senator Gaddy, saying that they had killed in committee tort reform legislation that would, by many accounts, have lowered insurance rates. In fact, Jim Donlan, insurance commissioner, the incumbent insurance commissioner, said, in fact, it would have. Um, see, the thing is, if Mr. John were here, he could say, no, it wouldn't. Here's why. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you said it would have. Why? And bluntly speaking, what did he screw up? Well, when you look at the tort reform bill, there's several there's several lines of thinking. The first thing is, when you look at what my opponent says about it, and I'm sure Gaddy and, and, and the other senators, the other uh, trial attorneys that were in Jude A are saying is it would have increased insurance company profits is why they said they killed it. Well, there's a line in the bill. It's, it's actually um, Section 7, and it says in that section of the tort reform bill that upon passage of the tort reform bill, if insurance company profits rise beyond what is allowable by law by the insurance commissioner, then the, it says insurance companies shall reduce the premiums to uh, the insurers to bring it back in line. So there was a guarantee in that bill. It says in that bill shall. It's talking about they should the insurance companies, they regulate the percentage profits so that way insurance companies can't bilk us for more than than you know they're a four business company they have to make a profit but the bill said that if in the nature of this bill the passage of the bill their insurance profits rise above what above what's allowable those companies have to lower the premiums to offset and that's what the bill talks about but you know you look at the origin of the bill itself the the house has tried four times to pass this thing and it keeps running in the jude a which kills it okay if you have a conservative by, house, by the you're talking about the committee now. That's okay. correct. Okay. That's right. When you have a conservative house of representatives, I promise you, if if every one of them and there was 69 votes on that, every one of them voted in favor of the bill. If a conservative house passes it, it's 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 going to be a good bill. Okay, but the problem is it hits Judiciary A, which is manned by that committee is manned by trial attorney Democrats who killed the bill. And they, of course, point to the insurance companies. We're a very litigious state. We have an, when you look at the national average of car accidents, we're on par. When you look at the number of car accidents, injuries from car accidents across the country, we're on par. But when you look at the number of lawsuits, we're twice, mm. twice the national average. Our insurance is the highest in the country. But the other line of thinking is this. The insurance problem is not a new problem. It didn't come up this legislative session. It didn't come up in, in, in February. It didn't come up in March. We've been battling for years. And if we think it's bad on a, on a consumer side, looking at the trucking companies, logging companies, oil and gas companies, their insurance has gone up so high so fast that they're having to finance their premiums. Many of those companies have the ability to hire more drivers and buy more trucks. They can't afford the insurance. This was a chance for us to at least try something to see if it worked. It wouldn't have hurt anything to try anything to, to try the bill. It wasn't a bad bill at all, but we didn't do it. But the other thing, line of thinking for me as a citizen, as a voter, as, a, as, a, as an insurance, I, mean, I pay the same premiums mm -hmm. we all do, same taxes, is that if that's not the bill, then your job as a legislator, even, even my opponent, his job as a legislator is to represent the folks in his district and say, if that's not the bill or there's something wrong with the bill, let me offer an amendment or let me offer some other piece of legislation that, that would help mm -hmm. the problem. And that wasn't done. And to me, that says it's not an insurance problem. It's a lawsuit problem. Let me switch gears here. Both the Republicans in the governor's race say they would not roll back Medicaid expansion. Do you agree with that? Would you would you work to roll back the Medicaid expansion? We have to address the fact that when you look at the folks that are on Medicaid, okay, 
there are folks that need to be on Medicaid. They, they, they need it. That's all they've got. And we need to be able to help them with that. When you look at the Medicaid expansion with the number of people who are on those roles that can afford their own insurance, can afford private insurance, and yet we as a state allow them to stay on those roles, what it does is it takes money away from those people that need it. It means you've got people that, that are denied coverage or denied medication or denied treatment because we are funding Medicaid expansion for people who can afford their own insurance, who may have abandoned their own insurance. I've seen plenty of numbers of, of, of people that make $100,000 or more that, that, that canceled their own private insurance but got on those rolls. That needs to be addressed because if not, the people who deserve it, the people who need it, aren't going to get it. Time for one more. You got one? Yeah. Jimmy Davis Bridge, inner city connector, road problems. Um, we've been waiting for a long time for these to happen. Jimmy Davis Bridge is a big deal. What will you do, Barry, to push these forward, to move forward? And do you support the inner city connector, A, I, I guess? I do. Look, it's no secret. I mean, all you have to do is ride anywhere in the in the district, and, and you're going to need a new suspension. You're going to need new tires, new shocks. It's terrible. And it's not just our roads. I, I talk to mayors throughout the district that have water problems, sewer problems, power problems, air conditioning problems, you name it. We have to make that money available. And the thing about it is, is we are receiving the money. We have the money to do those things. It's not being allocated properly. Jimmy Davis is, is approved. The money's allocated. The problem is we're so far down the list that every year, by the time it gets to Jimmy Davis Bridge, we've already spent our allocation. We have to allocate more to those projects. The inner city connector, we've got to connect I-49 to build the traffic through town. It, it it's a no-brainer that if you've got the transportation system through town, you're going to have shops, you're going to have stores, you're going to have gas stations, eateries, neighborhoods. You're going to have those things. If we don't connect them, it's a it's a big disconnect. And, and the money's there for that as well. We just have to look at how we spend the money and put it where it needs to go and do it quickly. 